How do I live without you? I want to know. My skin's looking really, really pink. I've got a spot. Fabulous. How do I breathe without you? You ever know. Is that the words? How do I ever, ever, ever survive? That's all I know of it. Hello everybody, it is me, Leanne Rhymes. Um, I am here today with another video for you. Um, if you are new here, then I am Domino. I'm a UK based drag queen um, and I get on YouTube pretty much every week really. Um, and I just kind of do what I want to be fair. But um, recently I've been doing some queer history videos. I also open dolls and I just do like get ready with me's and I talk about my life. And I'm just a general idiot on here. Um, so if that's your sort of cup of tea, then please give me a follow and a like and a subscribe and all that good stuff. That would be lovely. Thank you so, so much. This hair's a bit wild, isn't it, today? But it's all right, because it is going to be under a week. I plaited it all back and it looks lovely yesterday, because it were all like wavy. And then today it's a bit Einstein-y. It's not, it's not my fave. So today, we're gonna have a look at Anne Lister, um, also known, I mean, at the time, not very nicely, but like it's kind of become like a nickname that she's really known by media and things as well now. Um, so she's known as Gentleman Jack. Um, there was a series, um, like a dramatization of her life story recently on the BBC, um, which was like, it were quite good, but like there were some times where I just personally found her like, slightly unlikable. But, you know, it's a dramatisation, so I'm going to have a look into actual Anne Lister. That's who I've been researching today for you, um, and I really hope that you enjoy the video. Are these brows dry? Oh, they are. Oh, they're rock solid as well. Maybe today's the day that they don't start to lift. Don't hold your breath, as Nicole Scherzinger once said. So Anne Lister was born on the 3rd of April in 1791 in Halifax, which is a, I'd say it's a town now in um, West Yorkshire. Um, it's actually not like massively far from where I'm based, um, but it's kind of over towards like, um, it's between Manchester and um, Leeds kind of on that sort of motorway if you're familiar with the area. She was the second child and the eldest daughter of Jeremy Lister, who fought in the American War of Independence, um, and her mother was Rebecca Battle. The family had four sons and three daughters, but unfortunately only two of them survived past the age of 20, and that was Anne Lister, who this video is about, and her um, younger sister, Marianne. Um, so they only, they were the only sort of listers that lasted past the age of 20, unfortunately. Um, in that time, it wasn't like the best time for kind of healthcare and things. Um, they didn't have like the advancements that we kind of have now. I didn't do a great deal of research into kind of her siblings because as I said, there were like seven of them, eight of them including Anne, I think. So I'd have been here all day, really, if I'd have been telling you all about that once. She went to, um, well, she went to quite a few different schools. It's not really very clear whether or not Cause like, I know the schooling system, like it really does change. Like it's even changed recently um, from when I was at school. So, which makes me sound absolutely ancient. But yeah, she kind of, it seems like she like went to a lot of different places for her education. At the age of seven, she went to a school in Ripon. And then between 1801 and 1804, she was educated at home by a reverend called George Skeldin. And then she also visited her aunt and uncle who lived at a place called Shibden Hall, um, which kind of like takes a bit more of a main character role later in the story. And while she was there, she was also given lessons by a lady called Mrs. Mellon. Um, it's not really very clear like who she is. I don't know kind of if she educated all the children at Shibden Hall or like what the crack was. I would presume that she maybe would have done. Did they, did they call them like a governess or something when they were kind of like employed by a family to sort of educate their children at home? Maybe I'm making that up. I know that this looks crazy right now, but I'm going to cut it with like a paler concealer so it won't look as like wild. And then in 1804, um, and was sent to the Manor House School, which was in York. Um, and while she was there, that was where she met her first love, 
um, Eliza Rain. I feel like I've like actually completely missed, like, I mean, I did say it was a queer history video, but I like didn't really mention the fact that, um, so Anne Lister's like, Anne Lisper? I'm Anne Lisper. Um, Anne Lister is like um, one of the like sort of historical gay women um, that's kind of quite prominent in the, the UK at least. So her first love was this lady called, well, I guess at the time, this girl called Eliza Rain. So Anne Lister is very, very well known for her diaries. Um, that's kind of like the, the main thing that she's kind of known for in pop culture now. Um, and those diaries were in um, a special code, which is actually what um, herself and Eliza made up whilst they were at school. Ah oh, yes, get it all up in the hairline. That's lovely, look at that. I believe that Anne only actually stayed at the Manor House School for two years. And then when she left, Eliza was under the impression that kind of when she left school, she'd go and live with Anne and they'd kind of be together sort of thing. But unfortunately, Anne was like, she was a bit of a playboy, for want of a better word, play lady. Play woman, play girl. She had quite a few affairs after this. I mean, I don't know if you can really call them affairs because it seems like they were both very young and maybe, I don't know, like, I don't like to talk about people's business, except for that I do. It seems like they were kind of, I don't know, like, maybe on different pages or something. I'm not really sure. But yeah, like, when you are a kid and you, like, find your first love, you do kind of, like, really go all in, don't you? I know I certainly fucking did. And I had quite a few um, notable affairs. One in particular was with a lady called Mariana Belcom, which, like, in a weird crossover, so Eliza, who was, like, the first love, um, she ended up, so she, like, had a bit of a breakdown and she ended up in an asylum, which was actually run by Mariana, who was like the new love's father. Um, so, you know, drama there. I'm really in the mood for a lot of white highlighter today under my eyes. So I hope that you're all for that. Eliza, she didn't end up staying in that institution. She actually went to a place called Terrace House in Osbaldwick, um, and she died there on the 31st of January in 1860. Um, so kind of, I don't know how long is that life? She had quite a long life, really, but still, like, if she was kind of in the facility for the, the whole of it, that's really sad, isn't it? Anne Lister was very, very intelligent. Um, she was clearly, like, very heavily educated. It seems like that was quite an important thing um, for her and uh, her upbringing. Probably, I guess, like, because she fired so much on it, maybe. Um, but yeah, she, um, she took a particular interest in classical literature. Um, and she said that like the, I don't know what, exactly what the quote is, but basically she had like a very big interest in, um, I think it was Greek literature. I've just given myself a beard. Let's just try and blend it out, shall we? Am I blending it out or am I just putting it all over my neck? So as I said before, Shipton Hall kind of becomes quite a main sort of character in this, um, in this little biography that we're doing today. Um, so she inherited Shivenham Hall from her aunt and uncle when they when they died, um, and then so she had like I guess kind of like a share in the the building, um, and then when her father and her other aunt died, um, I think they both died in the same year actually in 1836. Um, she then became like the sole owner of Shipton Hall. It is still there, Shipton Hall. I've actually visited it before, as I'm sure like many people kind of have. It's like, it, it's quite an interesting house. It, um, it has a lot of grounds and you can actually do like the walk that she used to do, um, like down into Halifax, um, which is like up this really steep hill and it nearly killed me when I went up it. So, you know, if you're not that fit, then don't be doing it. Cause I could see, you know, the angels descending that day. As well as obviously ending up being the sole owner of Shipton Hall, I got powder all over this black shirt. Um, she also had kind of money in other things. So she invested in the canal and um, railway transport industries. She was invested, I think like they actually had a mine in fact in at Shivden Hall, sorry. And um, so she like had investment in that. She also had um, homes and things in, um, in Halifax, so like buildings that she rented out. So, you know, she was like, she was a very savvy businesswoman, which kind of for that time wasn't really sort of the norm, I guess. Um, it was often kind of seen as like the man's job to do all of that sort of business, but you know, I was like, no thank you. 
I don't need men. I mean, she literally didn't need men, did she? Wonder what that must be like. In terms of, um, so it was Mariana Balcom, um, but she did eventually marry um, and she became Mariana Lawton. Um, so she conducted like an affair, I guess, with her for um, two decades, um, which included, so obviously she got married, did Mariana, um, and apparently her husband kind of was fully aware of the affair, but he was just sort of resigned to the fact that it was happening. I've got something in my ear. Oh my God, I've got shame foam in my ear. Why didn't anybody tell me? But the main love of Anne Lister's life was um, Anne Walker. So she'd met her quite a lot in kind of her earlier life. Um, and then eventually, so she met her, I think in the 20s, so in 1820. And then in 1832, um, she became quite a wealthy heiress did Anne Walker. She sort of like started becoming a much more sort of substantial person in Anne Lister's life. It's very difficult because there's lots of Anne's in this story. Eventually they took communion together at a church in York. Which church was it? The Holy Trinity Church in York. Um, so they took communion on Easter Sunday, I think it was. Um, so it was the 30th of March, 1834. Um, and they decided that that was kind of basically them getting married. So um, although it wasn't kind of officially recognised at the time, um, that particular church in York, that is kind of considered the site of the first lesbian marriage. Now, this is kind of where my dislike of Anne Lister comes in from the series. I mean, it's not really mentioned, but then I'm like, are they really gonna kind of mention the petty tea, like, you know, on, on like actual history websites and stuff? So it seems like she carried on seeing that Mariana bird as well. Um, which, I don't know, I just don't really think that's very nice, if I'm honest. I don't think Anne number two was that impressed about it, even if, she, I mean, I don't know if she did know or not, but um, that's kind of what happens in the programme. Now, that might have just been, you know, for a bit of extra, dra like, dramatisation, but I was not happy when that happened, and I was like, well, she's dead to me now, unfortunately. And poor old Anne, Anne Walker, eh? Is it Anne Walker? Anne Walker's, yeah, Anne number two. Poor old era. Have I like done these eyebrows absolutely beautifully today? There is actually a commemorative blue plaque as well at the Holy Trinity Church, um, which kind of acknowledges that um, that was the site of the the kind of first um, lesbian marriage in the UK. So that's exciting. If you ever do get to York, um, I know it's like quite a big tourist destination in England because it's like very history-ish. That's not a word. But Anne did a lot of traveling, so this is Anne Lister. She started traveling, I think it was at the age of 28, and kind of, that was kind of what she funded with her, my eyes look crazy, um, with kind of the money that she, she got from Shipton Hall and like from her other investments. Um, so she had a real passion for that. Um, she did a lot of like mountaineering and stuff on her travel. It was quite a big thing that she was obviously like a woman and she was, doing these sort of very sporty activities. It's often like past commenting on. Um, and like, I wasn't sure whether or not to really like mention this because a lot of people say like that she was very masculine looking. And I'm like, what does that even really mean? Um, but it also mentions like that she's like quite muscular and stuff, which I mean, if you're climbing up mountains then and like hiking and stuff, I mean, she hiked every day up that giant hill that nearly killed me. So it's hardly surprising really that she was very athletic during kind of her earlier years traveling. It seems like she like took quite a lot of lovers. Um, so yeah, she was like a bit of a, you know, an international woman of mystery. She were like out there spreading that like seed or whatever, I guess. Um, I hate that saying, but you know, she was sowing a wild oats, shall we say. Oh, another thing as well that I did actually forget to mention. I mean, this isn't really gonna make like much sense for the continuity of the, um, of the video, but so Anne was like very religious, which is like, you know, fair enough. Um, but she was also a Tory, which I mean, I don't really know like what the beliefs were then like that Tories had, but like it, it always just strikes me weird when a queer person is a Tory. I mean, sorry if you are a queer Tory out there. And she said like that she felt like um, land and ownership and stuff should be saved for like the aristocracy. And I was just like, come on Anne. Don't be a Dave 
As I said, I didn't find her particularly likeable in the show, but I didn't think that she were a Tory. So Anne Lister's final trip that she did partake in, she went on with Anne Walker and they went from Shipton Hall and they went through France. Um, and then to Denmark, and then they went to Sweden, and they ended up in Russia. Um, and when they got to Russia, they went to, I think it was St. Petersburg. And then they decided like, oh, well, we're gonna go right into Russia. Um, so they traveled south. They went along the Volga to, um, it was called Caucasus, Caucasus. Um, and basically, so um, because like at that time, Russia was under the rule of the Tsar, um, a lot of kind of, that area of Russia, um, it were a bit like mental, you know, they they didn't really like the government and stuff. And it was kind of unheard of for a Westerner to kind of make it into, you know, to kind of go into that area and to visit that and kind of explore it. They did have to have military escorts during that um, particular part of the trip. But like, I mean, it just kind of goes to show, doesn't it? it kind of, I don't know, you feel like a bit of a div, don't you saying this like when you're a, a bloke, but, I mean, it was very different times and, you know, like, even the men were, like, scared to go there and, like, they were seen as, you know, like, the stronger ones at the time. Um, and, like, and Lister were just like, oh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go there. So, do you know what I mean? I don't know. I just found that quite interesting. Like, I mean, I don't know. She must have been a bit scared. I mean, she was certainly fearless, but she wasn't, like, stupid. She must have known, like, the danger that, like, could maybe befall them but she did say that like she found people sort of um what's the word like their reaction to them coming through that area very interesting she said the people come in in to look at us as if we were some strange animals such as they had not seen the like of before i love myself in this eye i just think blue and brown really do like they just sit together nicely don't they you know, I've absolutely fucked the shape of it, but I just don't care. Lister did die in 1840 at the age of 49. Um, so she died of a fever in, I think it's called Kotai. I'm not really sure how you say the name, sorry. Um, it was in Georgia um, and she was still traveling with Anne Walker at the time. Um, so Walker had her body brought back to, to Halifax. So, so she was buried in Halifax Minster um, and they did actually, like pave over her tombstone. So like it was kind of lost for a little while. Um, but then in 2000, they kind of lifted up the, what they'd covered it with and they found her, her tombstone. So you can actually sort of see that if you do want to. Again, like, I mean, I don't think Halifax is as much of a touristy destination, but you know, if you're there and you fancy going to see Anne. So when I actually went to Shibden Hall, the way that I read, I mean, I don't know if I just like read it wrong, um, but there's obviously like a part there about um, Anne Walker. So it makes out like Anne Lister left her like the home and stuff and like the money. And then she was, um, she was sort of put into an asylum and that was kind of where she spent the rest of her days. However, on the reading that I have done, um, it, is this a broken one? No, it's seen, is it? it? Nope, that looks a bit too juicy for me. So in the reading that I have done, so it says that Lister's estate was left to her paternal cousins, um, but Walker, so Anne Walker was given um, a life interest, which I guess means like that she could stay there for the rest of her life. She then was declared to be of unsound mind and she spent some time in Terrace House. It says that she did leave there and she went to Shibden Hall again and then she ended up living in her family home, so like her, her family estate, which was in Likely. Um, and she did die in 1854 um, at that same childhood home. It seems like, you know, like a cough could have got you then. So, so Anne Lister is um, obviously kind of the most well-known for her diaries. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people say that her diaries are, you know, kind of very graphic in terms of, well, I guess like graphic for the time anyway, in terms of like the portrayal of lesbian love and like, you know, kind of her romantic encounters and stuff. Um, I mean, I'm not sure, I've not actually read them, but it is also said like, you know, it's not all just, it's not like a bloody romance novel, like when you read it, she also, I mean, she was a very, very intelligent person. Um, so, you know, she talks a lot about like the politics of the day, like finance things, um, culture, like just lots and lots of things. So it is like, 
I mean, I'd quite like to give it a read, to be fair. I need to finish the book that I'm currently on, which had, I mean, I seem to have been reading it for my entire life at this point. It's quite a good, like, glimpse, apparently, into um, that particular time. Have I been calling her Anne Walker? I really hope I've not. It's very difficult. They're all called Anne in this, aren't they? As I said before, they were um, in, like, a, an encrypted cipher, um, which, obviously, like, nobody really knew how to crack. However, it was cracked by um, the last inhabitant of Shibden Hall, which was John Lister um, and a friend of his who was Arthur Burrell. So John was s advised to sort of basically burn the diaries because, you know, it was like seen as so taboo. Um, but he didn't, he hid them behind the law where they'd find them, where they found them before, sorry. Um, and then obviously like they came to light again in the future. Um, when the time was more accepting. So in 2011, um, Lister's diaries were added to the register of the UNESCO, I think it is, um, Memory of the World Programme. The register, it's kind of noted on there that although it is a valuable account of the time, um, the comprehensive and painfully honest account of lesbian life and reflections on her nature, however, which have made these diaries unique. It says they have shaped and continue to shape the direction of UK gender studies and women's history. Like I said, they like, they called a gentleman Jack and that wasn't, you know, like a cute nickname sort of thing. It was like, they were basically saying like, oh, she looks like a man, which was seen as like an insult at the time. Um, and yeah, she kind of, she did have like, she had it tough. Cool. So that's my makeup done. I'm going to quickly put on a wig and a little shimmy in the top um, and I'll be happy. This lash, it, once again, is not giving me a great time, but let's just pretend that it's on straight, shall we? So I am back. Um, I replatted this wig a little while ago and then I wore it for that gig that I got during Christmas with Kitty and Ella. And now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if I actually, if it looks that great. I don't know if I showed my best self that day. You know what, it is actually okay. I'm just not used to like seeing, I don't know, like it this sort of like round. I think it's because I used to have it more like on top here and I've done it further back, the ponytail. The ponytail's looking ratty as hell. Oh, it's hard. It's hard out here for a bitch. Oh, I nearly rubbed it straight off my head then. Don't call me too hard. That was my um, Queer Histories video about Anne Lister. Um, I did think that she was quite an important figure to kind of look at just because she was kind of so ahead of her time in like so many ways. I mean, as I've said, you know, numerous times in this video, um, she's not kind of like my fave character from the personal side of things. Um, I mean, again, it is like a dramatisation is the, the television series, Gentleman Jack. So, I mean, I don't know, but then like some of the history, it does kind of suggest that, you know, she wasn't always that nice, but I guess like sometimes you can't be too nice. You know, she had like one of the first, I think the first lesbian wedding in the UK. So that in itself is very, very, commendable I would say. Keep taking my thumbs in and out of this so they're, they're meant to like be little thumb holes but because my arms are so like long and gibbon like when I try to put them in it just feels like my like thumbs are going to snap back on themselves like her legs in black swan. I hope that you did enjoy today's video as always if you did please like subscribe comment share send to your friends and your family, share it on Facebook, all the good stuff, Facebook. As always, my social media will be on the, the very end. It's just Domino Official on everything. So please feel free to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And until next week, I shall see you all very soon. Bye.